Hey everyone, it's an aging zombie here. We got some exciting news and gameplay for Black Ops 6 Zombies today, so let's get into it. So Call of Duty released a trailer for Terminus Island, and along with that trailer they released a blog post going in-depth about gameplay mechanics, what's new, returning, and what's been changed. Also, Charlie Intel tweeted out a 17-minute video of gameplay from Terminus Island. This has been a lot of cool stuff dropped all at once, and I just wanted to go over a few things from the blog post that stuck out to me about changes for Black Ops 6 Zombies. So from the blog post, they mentioned that salvage is being consolidated into a single form. So instead of common and rare, there's only going to be the one form to keep track of. And in addition, when playing with others, the dropped salvage won't be global, so anything you see drop is just meant for you, and I think both these are great changes from Cold War. Third person will be coming to Black Ops 6, and from what I gather, it'll work the same as Modern Warfare Zombies, where you can just toggle it on and off, even during a match. Now, I don't normally play in third person, but it is really fun to switch to it from time to time, and I also know that there are people that prefer third person game modes. They mentioned that there is now going to be an option in the menus to have the Pack-A-Punch camo uh, not added to your weapon, which I think is cool. I wanted that in Modern Warfare Zombies, which um, I guess in round-based, it's not as big of a deal because in Modern Warfare Zombies, you know, you can bring in a Pack-A-Punch crystal and Pack-A-Punch it right from the start, and you would normally have to go up to the machine, punch it, and then it wouldn't apply. But in round-based, you never really can come in and just have your gun pack punch. so not as big of a deal when it comes to round-based, but as someone that is fairly forgetful, it'll be nice to have that option so that when I go up to a pack a punch, I know I don't have to worry about like, oop, I gotta punch it first. Upgrading perks, ammo mods, and field upgrades seem to be a little different this time around. So before you would spend the different rarity of crystals to upgrade each perk or field upgrade, and any of those effects from those upgrades would just always be active as long as you were using that perk ammo mod or field upgrade. This time around they are calling them augments and they are broken into two categories, minor and major augments. And each perk ammo mod and field upgrade will have their own research path on how to unlock these augments. A minor upgrade is said to offer limited advantage to the item, usually during use, and a major augment is said to offer a substantial advantage to the behavior of the item, usually during use. Before each match, you select one minor and one major augment for each item, and then only those two will be active when you are using the various items. Another new change is to the wall buys. So now you will have the option to select a custom build for each weapon, and then when you buy that gun from the wall, instead of random attachments, it'll be decked out how you've built it out. Now I'm personally really excited about this, and I'm sure some people won't be happy with this, but the nice thing is, is they do say it'll be an option that you can toggle in the menus. So if you want a more classic wall buy experience, you can just keep it that way. And when it comes to field upgrades, at least at launch, it looks like Tesla Storm will not be returning, which is a bummer. That was definitely my favorite field upgrade to use in Cold War, um, so much so that I started using that as my field upgrade in Modern Warfare Zombies as well. However, they do have a new field upgrade called Dark Flare, and this sounds and looks really cool, and in fact, you can see it in action in the trailer, and the description says you generate a massive energy beam that deals lethal shadow damage the beam penetrates everything in its path. Seems like it'll be a great way to get out of a situation and when you accidentally find yourself surrounded and you'll be able to just punch a hole right through the horde. They mentioned this time around you will be able to bring in tacticals and lethals with you at the start of the match, uh, which I think is a nice change. Um, and it will still be the case that zombies will randomly drop equipment that you can either swap to or if it's something you already have, it'll just, you know, refill. Um, and then you also still will be able to craft any equipment uh, that you didn't bring and want to swap over to. There's a new support item called Mutant Injection where you turn yourself into a mangler for a short while. And this looks wild. It's like a juggernaut suit, but you're playing as one of the infected looks like a ton of fun to use and I'm calling it right now 
one of the Easter egg steps, you're gonna have to be the mangler using this new uh, support item. Ammo mods now seem to be purchasable through the arsenal in game rather than the pack-a-punch machine. We're also getting a new ammo mod called Shadow Rift and the description says, bullets deal shadow damage. Each bullet has a chance to spawn a black hole if striking a normal or special enemy, warping nearby zombies away and dropping some from air at high speeds. This sounds like to me a variant of like Casimir grenades. Now probably not as powerful as those, but kind of similar. So I'm excited to try this ammo mod out. Now for Terminus Island, we are gonna be getting a tactical raft. So using that to get around the map. And as a solo player, this is gonna be interesting because from the looks of it, when you are the one driving, you can't shoot. And from the, the trailer that Call of Duty released and in the gameplay footage from Charlie Intel, we do see that there's this like sea monster. So as a solo player, you're driving this boat, you're gonna be defenseless. So it'll be interesting to see how that kind of plays out I'm sure that they've thought of it and you it does say that you can swim around but that I'm they also kind of allude that that sea monster is still going to be there so really excited to see how all this is going to work out especially as a solo player. Another thing they mentioned is they are now limiting the number of self revives to just 3 per match. Now it's not clear if that means per person or for the entire team as a whole. Lastly, one nice change is you are going to be able to save and quit a match so you can come back later and continue. This is going to be great for people who are going for higher rounds, so you'll be able to periodically work at it instead of com uh, committing to hours of work. Now part of this save feature is it appears that at the end of each round it will do an auto save. So in case there is a disconnect from the servers because this game is uh, gonna be required to be online at all times to play, if you ended up getting disconnected, it's nice that you will be able to get back to where you were without losing all of your progress. And from my understanding, this also includes if you are playing with people and let's just say you end up getting disconnected, you will be able to rejoin your friends in progress in that match. Now I know this isn't really necessarily part of the save feature, but it is nice that they will seem to have a auto, a not auto, but a reconnect feature so that your friends and you are not just SOL and you get to continue on with what you're doing. And that is gonna wrap it up for me. Between the information that was given and the gameplay that was shown, I'm so ready to be playing this game. I'm excited to see more gameplay and how other content creators are going to react at COD Next in just a few weeks. I hope everyone enjoyed this video, and until the next one, peace.